Whatever you think about Brexit, there is no mandate for no deal. Gentlemen, the Queen has agreed today to prorogue, suspend Parliament. Andrew, I'll come to you first. What's your response to this? It's a huge pity that this has happened because nobody wants the Queen dragged into politics. She has to follow the advice of the government. But to be proroguing Parliament, which prevents Parliament from meeting at all for five weeks during a national crisis, is quite unacceptable. Hillary and I have been in Parliament a long time. We've been ministers. No way would the governments of which we were a party have thought of offering advice like this to the Queen. And it's keep creating a deep constitutional crisis, which I think is only going to be resolved by Boris Johnson backing down and allowing more time for Parliament to debate these crucial matters. Hilary, what do you think is now the most likely best approach in the Commons for dealing with the attempted suspension? Is it still a legislative approach to tie the, the hands of the government, take control of the order paper, or is it a no-confidence vote? I think there are two separate issues here. One is prorogation, where I think it's going to be quite difficult to prevent it. What we need to focus yeah. on is the real issue which is stopping a no-deal Brexit. And we showed, as the House of Commons earlier this year, our ability to pass legislation against the wishes of the government to force Theresa May to seek more time. And that, I think, is what we'll have to do uh, again. But the time is very, very short, given what the Prime Minister's done today. And, you know, whether you're in favour of Brexit or against, Part of the job of being Prime Minister is to be held to account, to be scrutinised, to be asked questions by us as elected representatives. And it is outrageous that if, if he gets away with this, in the first three months of his time as Prime Minister, he will have spent less than two weeks facing the House of Commons. Nobody could describe that as democratic. Do you think in the referendum campaign much was made of taking back control? Do you think many people realised that meant taking back control for the executive? Well, no one thought that, because remember, all the people who are in favour of Brexit now told us there will be a deal. You know, indeed, remember Farage said that Norway was a great place to be. Well, Norway is a much more elaborate deal than even the one that Theresa May negotiated. So we're in completely uncharted territory here. And part of the reason why I have for a long time been a strong supporter of a second referendum is that no one voted for this. Indeed, what's become clear in the now three and a half years since we held the uh, first referendum is that nobody could know what they were voting for because there had been no deal in 2016 and what was in is increasingly clear is that the democratic process requires there to be a second referendum now people can see what Brexit means and if Brexit means no deal you know not enough medical supplies for the country shortages of food people not being able to get in and out of the country then there definitely needs to be either an election or a referendum and I do not think people will put up with anything less than that. Hilary, how real are the concerns here about a no-deal? What's it going to mean for our country? Well, we took evidence, I chair the Brexit Select Committee, from a range of business organisations representing great British success stories and asked them a very simple question. What does a no-deal Brexit mean to you? And I think one of the answers we got from Make UK, they represent British manufacturing. That's pretty important. A lot of people's jobs depend on it. Uh, they described it as an act of economic vandalism. The government's own economic assessment shows it's the worst outcome. That means a less strong economy, less tax revenue than we would otherwise have had. As Andrew's just said, delays for goods that are the lifeblood, the artery of economic activity, uh, shortages of some foods, enormous uncertainty for businesses. In my lifetime, I can never remember a Prime Minister who was arguing for a course of action that he himself admits is going to leave us poorer than we would otherwise be as a country. How can we allow that to happen, especially when there is no mandate for no deal from the referendum? It's so important to remember that. Whatever you think about Brexit, there is no mandate for no deal. This is the reason why we're in such a big crisis. It's precisely what Hillary has said. Government, you know, Macmillan famously said, what's the biggest problem in government? Events, dear boy, events. These are events entirely inflicted on the government by itself. There is nobody besides the government out there who wants no deal. The public were never consulted on it. The uh, opinion polls show a huge majority against no deal, also a very big majority against prorogation. People expect MPs, once they're elected, to do their job and to sit and meet. So this is a problem being created entirely in 10 Downing Street by Boris Johnson. Johnson. It can be solved in 10 Downing Street by Boris Johnson by him giving up this extraordinary power lust, which seems to want to elbow everyone else aside, behaving reasonably and allowing the people to decide what should happen next. Just finally, gentlemen, November 1st, are we going to be in or outside of the European Union? Oh, I'm very confident we're going to be in because, because Parliament is taking control. Hillary and his colleagues in the House of Commons, remember what happened in March when we were days away from no deal then? Parliament passed a law which obliged the government to negotiate for an extension of Article 50 and not to leave without a deal. I'm very confident that Hillary 
and his colleagues who are across parties, very public spirited, they will do the right thing for the country. I really hope so, but it depends on the votes of members of parliament. And I would appeal to my colleagues when we return next week, it's now or never. This is the moment. You can't look back later on in your life and think, well, I failed to act when I should have done to prevent a no-deal Brexit. If you believe in your heart, as well as with your head, that a no-deal Brexit is disastrous for the country, then you have to vote to prevent it happening. And like Andrew, I come to the view the only way of resolving this is not a no-deal Brexit. It's not actually revocation to cancel the referendum. I don't think you can do that. It's to go back to the British people and say, here's the real choice. That is what leaving looks like. That's the deal that's been negotiated. There's Remain. Now you know what you know that you didn't know three years ago, namely that the promise made by the Leave campaign, you can have all your sovereignty back, but don't worry, you'll keep all the economic benefits. It wasn't true. Brexit involves choices, and I think the British people should make the final choice. Hilary Benn. Oh, go on, Andrew. Let the people decide. Very good. Uh, Hilary Benn, Andrew Adonis. Yes, <laughs> the Labour Lords Commons doubleheader. Thank you very much for your time. Thank Cheers. You. Absolute Thanks. pleasure to meet you. Cheers, Hilary. Likewise. Thank you. All the best. Cheers, okay. Andrew. Ben, I just wanted to say Here we are. Oh, and now, now an meeting yes. led by Paul Mason. Now for handshakes. Very good. Cheers, Cheers, Andrew. Thank